It makes about as much as sense as Satan wanted to be an angel again. Amen. It don't make no sense at all Amen. if you rightly interpret the Bible. Yes. Give me 1 Corinthians 11, child. Right. If you can't rightly divide it, no sense of trying to teach it. Start right in at verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Again, Paul is using apostolic authority. Be followers of me, because I'm the one who's following Christ. And I'm trying to teach you how to follow Christ, but you can't follow Christ unless you first yes. follow me. Read. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me now, in all things. Now, brethren does not necessarily mean brethren. It means brothers and sisters talking about church here. Uh -huh. That you remember me in all things. Remember what I'm teaching you. Everything I teach you, remember it. Amen. And keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Now, an ordinance is an instruction, a rule. Amen. Now, if we drop down to verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Amen. Now, didn't he say keep the ordinance? Yes, sir. And one of the ordinances is a woman not praying with her head uncovered. Amen. What's that got to do with hair? Yes, amen. Teach. It's talking about a veil covering. Yes. And if you've got an analytical Bible, it'll show you that it means veil. Amen. And if you don't have an analytical Bible and you're interested in your religion, your religious persuasion, go to the library. Amen. Look it up in the Greek lexicon, Amen. Hebrew lexicon, uh, Hebrew uh, New Testament translated Bible, Amen. Greek Hebrew study Bible. Amen. All of those will tell you covered means veil. Amen. 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 And it don't mean that little dolly. Or, or, right, yeah. We used to wear the little dolly, didn't we? Amen. Until God gave us a revelation. Yes. Amen. What that, what's that for? Wouldn't that represent the veil? No, it don't represent the veil. And what do we have to do? We have started to go wearing the veil. Amen. Obedience. Amen. Uh, how, it ain't about pride. Amen. It's about obedience. Amen. Praise God. When I found out that that was wrong, we had to wear the veil, we went to the veil. Amen. Now, some didn't like it and left the church. Fine. Amen. But we still got the veil. Amen. And I'm still teaching the same thing. Amen. This is not for everybody. Preach, Everybody's not going to be saved. Right. <coughs> Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Amen. for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone Amen. that believe it. Amen. You've got to believe it. Amen. Before you can apply it. If you don't believe it, you ain't going to never apply it. That's right. Now, why did God tell women to wear a veil? I don't have the slightest idea. But when you get to glory, ask you. If, if, if you got up enough nerve. Amen. But what I'm trying to say here is this, church. If this is God's ordinance for his church, Amen. follow. All right. Don't question it. Follow. Yes. Well, it don't sound right. A whole lot of things may not sound right, but follow it anyhow. Right. Praise God. Don't try to be too wise. Don't be too smart. Because you find yourself smarter than God. And that makes you an idiot. Amen. That makes you a genuine fool when you think you're smarter than God. Amen. Every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were How shaven. How many women want to walk around with their head shaven? Amen. Now, if veil means hair, right. what do you do? Shave your head, and then when you get ready to uh, leave church, pick up your hair and put it back on your head. <laughs> That's so out. foolish. Hallelujah. Praise God. If the woman be not covered. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. For if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Now again, those who question this teaching, I ask you to go to Holloman's Dictionary, Bible of Religion. And that is a prestigious reference book. They don't care what church you belong to, what church you go to, or what religious persuasion you are. The only thing they're interested in is a point of Christian history. Amen. And you will find in the uh, Holloman's Dictionary Bible, mm -hmm. it tells you why Paul wrote this epistle. Amen. Because women thought that their new freedom mm -hmm. meant that they didn't have to wear veil coverage. And Paul had to hurry up and correct it Amen. and write this epistle. Amen. So this epistle is for the church. Thank you, Jesus. Now, again, we have to understand certain rules. Amen. Notice what it says in verse 5 again. Amen. But every woman that prayeth or prophesy with her head uncovered. Now prophesy means to retell or foretell. Amen. And it says woman, didn't it? Amen. Well, I thought he said a woman remains silent in the church. Amen. 
Well, she's going to prophesy on, on the street corner. Hallelujah. Well, in the home. Yes. But in the early church, church was in the home. Amen. They couldn't go in the temple. Right. Except in a very few places could they go in the temple. Amen. They they had church in people's houses. Amen. 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 So people got to understand. Did Paul give that teaching? Yes. But he was talking about an overall context Amen. to the Christian faith Amen. that women be silent. Amen. But he wasn't talking about women chosen. Amen. And called. I know he wasn't because in Phoebe, let's turn, turn that again now. Ooh, Romans. Is it 16? Amen. Yes. Romans 16. Verse 1. Verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church. Now again, yes. this passage is so very important. If you read it too fast, you miss the context. But if you slow down and read it, you get the full context right. in what it is saying. Mm -hmm. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, sister. which is a servant Amen. of the church. Amen. Servant at the hotel. Church. <laughs> Somebody's house. Church. Amen. Servant of the church. Amen. Servant, again, means minister. Yes. Amen. And minister means servant. Now, obviously, he's talking about something that has to do with spiritual values. Yes. I read. That ye receive her in the Lord. Now the church, she's going to. The elders must receive her in the Lord. Amen. Now that also is quite important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in other words, she's doing the Lord's business. Uh -huh. We're not just sending her on a vacation or something. Uh -huh. We're sending her pertaining to something concerning the Lord's business uh -huh. because we already <laughs> said she's a minister, a servant of the Lord. All right. That ye receive her in the Lord as becometh mm -hmm. saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she had need of you. For she had been a superior of many, and of myself also. Watch now. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Now, wait a minute. Uh -huh. read, read verse 4. Who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. I believe there's another passage where it says uh, Priscilla and Aquila uh, church in their house. It's verse 5. Uh, verse 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. In their house. Now again, if you know anything about the Hebrew idiom or instruction, salutation always went to the male, never to the female. Yes. But Paul here greets both of them and hold them in the same context. Yes. The church that is in there, not his, Amen. in their house. Amen. He starts out by greeting both of them, Priscilla and Aquila. Amen. Wait a minute, what does it say there? Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my what? Helpers in Christ Jesus. There was ministers too. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, now get me a uh, second epistle of John. All right. You got to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Or otherwise you'll never give clarity to the people seeking after truth. Amen. Second epistle. Mm -hmm. uh, jump right in at verse I believe I'm verse one. one. The elder unto the elect lady. Now who's the elder? The elder is John. Amen. Mm -hmm. The bishop or elder. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking to a church in his diocese. Mm -hmm. The elder and who? Unto the elect lady and her children. Never would have used the word elect All right, if she wasn't a woman in a higher uh, esteem All right, than just ordinary women. Amen. Not only would he not have used the word elect, he never would have used the word lady. Amen. Amen. He'd use the word woman Amen. or sister. Amen. But he used two words to let you know this woman is just not an ordinary Amen. sister or an ordinary woman. Amen. To the elect lady and her children, children means congregation. Amen. And if you read John's epistle, he always refers to the church as children. Amen. 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 So people got to understand, yes, if a woman's not chosen and not called to a higher position, she's not to speak. Amen. But if God has chose her, I think people better leave it alone. Hallelujah. You don't want to fight against God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Get me Judges, fourth chapter. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm going to sign in a very few Take minutes. Judges. 
Mm-hmm.